All right. We have already discussed about simple exponential smoothing. Now let us discuss about Holtz technique, which is also called as double exponential method. Simple in simple exponential smoothing. In simple exponential smoothing, we will have only level, which is captured using. I mean, we have alpha as a coefficient value for that. But when it comes to your double exponential or holes technique, you will have level and the trend. So you'll have level component and the trend component. When it comes to the level component, you have alpha as a coefficient value. And when it comes to your trend, you'll have beta value. If you want to capture the global trend, we need linear regression model. If you want to capture the local trend, it's exponential, exponential model. So your data-driven approaches would capture what? Would capture the local trend, exponential model. By default, alpha value should be 0.2 and beta value should be 0.15. And what would happen if alpha equal to 0? If alpha equal to 0, then the level is level plus the trend value, previous level plus the previous trend value. And if beta value is equal to 0, then this component will become 0. The trend value is equal to the previous trend value symbol. All right. Now, let us do this. Let us try to go back to the aviation data. While we are in this data partition, I'll go to smoothing, double exponential. Double exponential is also called as Holtz method. So you select this. We, we are going to produce the forecast. We are not going to disturb the default values, alpha and beta. Alpha for level, beta for trend. Let me click on OK. There we go. We have the validation error, which is 8.76. So when it comes to holds or double exponential smoothing with the default alpha and beta values, What was the error? Error was 8.76. Now, the challenge here is, do we have a better alpha and beta values, which gives us the least error? For that, we need to optimize. Right? Let us look at the optimization and see what happens then. So here we have the data, go to smoothing, double exponential, <laughs> I'll just check this option called optimize and click on OK. 8.82, so it is no better, it is not better than your default value, so 8.82. So this is no better than your default values. So what are the opt optimized values? Alpha is 0 0.19 and beta is 0 0.20. Right? For these two, you get the next best error, but this is not better than your default values. All right. Now the third technique is Winter's method. In simple exponential smoothing, you'll have level. In double exponential smoothing or Holtz version, you will have level and trend. And in Winters method, which is also called as Holtz Winters, will have seasonality. Why is it called as Holtz Winters? Because you have level and trend, which is related to Holtz, and you have the seasonality component. You have the level, you have the trend, and you have the seasonality. 
and this seasonality component is given using gamma. So you have alpha for level, you have beta for trend, and you have gamma for your seasonality. Okay, so the default value of alpha is 0.2, we know that. The default value for beta is so much, and the default value for gamma is 0 0.05. And all these three values lie within the range of 0 to 1. Now, do you need to remember these formulae from the interview perspective? No. But do you need to remember these values from the interview perspective? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. So, let us run this model also. We have this partition data. I go smoothing, hold winters. And within hold winters, since you have seasonality, you have all these variants that you can try out. Additive seasonality, multiplicative seasonality, etc. Let me select multiplicative for now. You can try out all those uh, techniques and see which technique gives you the least error. So I select this. And um, we need to select, uh, or I, I will let all the values remain as is, and we'll just click on OK. All the default values. And what is the error that we have got with the default values? 8.76 once again. So once again, it is 8.76. And this is for winters or whole to winters technique with the default alpha, beta, and gamma values. But if we try to optimize, then what happens? Let us try this. We'll just, just try to optimize alpha, beta, and gamma values. So I'll go to the data partition smoothing, holds, multiplicative, and we're going to check the option which says optimize, right? And let me click on OK. 9.27, so this is no better. It is 9.27. So your optimized values were giving you better results. Now, Remember one more thing, since we are speaking about seasonality here, right, we should have chosen period equal to 4. We have let the period be 1, but when we change this to 4, what happens? Let's see. Because we have 4 quarters, which is equal to 1 year, right? Look at that. 2.44. Two point four four for winter's technique. When when we let let the values be default values, and when we have changed the seasonality period to four. Now this is going to determine the success, right? The moment you decide wrong seasonality, you tend to get a wrong value. So given all these techniques, now we we know for a fact that. Winter's technique is the best because it has the least error, 2.44. Now that we decided that this is going to be the best model, what do we need to do? We need to combine these two. We need to combine the training and validation data. Right? And here, in the partition data, if you notice here, we have chosen, you know, these four as your validation data. Now we don't want that. We want to combine all the data points. And then we want to forecast for the next four quarters. So let me copy that. Let me add a new worksheet. Paste it there. And we want to forecast the sales in thousands. And we want to forecast for the next four values. Okay. So I go back here, 
we found that ideally we should have looked into Holt Winters additive, Holt Winters node trend, and just tried out uh, various other models also. So we have this data here. Right, and uh, yeah, now we will have to decide that time period is so much. Let me choose the range property. We have this data, so we have this selected variable, the time variable, period should be four. Look at this, forecast options. Update the estimate each time. We just don't want to produce the forecast, but we want to update it each time basically, rather than one forecast. So let us see, let us forecast for one uh, future value. Yeah. There we go. So we have one quarter, the next quarter forecast value would be so much. 5272.323. Yeah. In this way we determine the next forecasted value. So you just put it here for the next quarter, whatever be that quarter. And we use that value for the next four uh, values also. This is how we need to forecast and this is how we determine on what is the best technique.